Good Wednesday evening, everybody. Come on in, y'all. Uh, of course, I know by now everybody knows uh, that we're mourning um, the passing of one of our iconic rock, rhythm, and blues uh, singers in the person of Tina Turner. Um, just want to just say, just let's just lift uh, Tina's family and friends and her fans, of course, just lift everybody up in prayer that we, um, even though I didn't know her personally, obviously, well, not obviously, I just, I didn't know her personally, but she's one of those women that I held uh, kind of close to me. I always enjoyed her music. She was one of those people that, in my head, she was a friend. And over the years, I've listened to her music and uh, about you know, her albums and things like that and watch her on TV and whatever. Never had the opportunity to um, go see her in concert or anything, but my husband did whenever he was over in uh, England. But just to hear of her passing, it's just sort of a sort of a gut punch, you know, because I'm thinking um, I loved and admired her marriage, her second marriage. You know, she endured her first marriage. She got through that however she had to. She shared some things that hopefully helped a lot of women. And in her second marriage as well, that she had a, a great, great relationship from what I know through the tabloids and through her own uh, professions. And that, you know, I was, didn't realize she was as sick as she was. Not that I had to or was going to. But anyway, we just want to uh, lift her family up in prayer that they feel the the, the love and the, the warmth and the comfort from our Holy Spirit as they go through this time of bereavement and anybody else that's out there, I don't, you know, I don't know who, what's going on in anybody's families personally. Uh, but just want to just lift her up, that she, lift her family up, that they will be comforted, uh, by the prayers of the righteous and by those who stand in the gap and that will pray for that family. And like to say to me, I, I felt it because I do, I, do admire what she did in her career. I do admire the things that she was able to share with this world and her music abilities, you know. So anyway, we just, we salute Tina Turner for all that she left us musically and spiritually and mentally. She was, you know, very forthcoming with what she, whatever she had to say. So we say to her family, we hold, uh, we stand there right with you and hold your arms up as you go through this bereavement. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, be cooking a few things here on a more somber note, on a more, a little bit better note. Um, it's time for me to make some salsa. So I'm going to go ahead and do some, make some salsa and get it going. And while we are, while we're lifting people up and praying, because when I finish the salsa, I think I'm just going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, and, and bid you a uh, grand uh, fond adieu. Um, we're just going to go ahead and start. Just say we're still praying for the world. We're still praying for all the things that's going on around the world. The Italian families that are still going through uh, with that all that tremendous rain. And I know that there are storms throughout the country, even right here in the United States, because it is that time of the season, that time of the year. Here in North Carolina, the weather is absolutely gorgeous, and I tell God, thank you. It's mild, it's cool, a little bit warm. Some people are out on vacation and good because they'll be able to take advantage of this beautiful, wonderful weather. So, uh, but again, we are going to continue to um, keep all of our sisters and brothers, wherever they are, if they're going through some things, we're going to continue to lift them up in prayer that God will comfort them as they go through whatever they're going through. Excuse me. Nari, yes, there's some gummies over here. Look they're gummy worms. Look right on the side there, or on top of that, look on top of that cabinet that you stand in front. You see them on the side over there? Hey. Mm -hmm. Just leave them on the counter. Just leave them on the counter for me. I give you want watermelon? Yes. Okay, I'll get you some watermelon in just a second. Okay, y'all, excuse me, I have to take care of Norway. He decided he won't come back and hang out with me today, even though yesterday he told me uh, he could not hang out. He couldn't hang out with me yesterday because I had to go to Sam's Club. So, 
because he, he could not do slams. I thought, oh, okay. But anyway, um, we're just going to continue to lift people up uh, as they go through things because, you know, when we go through things, uh, it's good when people lift us up and encourage us through our bereavement and through our hardship. So, anywho, we're going to go ahead and uh, get back into this salsa. It's time for me to make salsa. We've eaten it all up, and I need some fresh salsa. As you can see, I've got some onions cut. I got some tomatoes. Gotta wash all this stuff. Got me a big old new bag of celery and some green peppers. And that's basically what it takes veggie wise. I need some, I didn't remember to buy my um, so fresh cilantro, but I do have some dried cilantro. When I get to the store, I'll buy some fresh and throw it in there later. But for today, we're gonna be using it dry. And of course, I'm gonna put my fresh garlic in that I've got over there in my jar some uh, lemon juice and some vinegar and a little bit of salt and we're going to have us a big old fresh bowl of salsa so y'all hang tight i'm going to go get to the sink and go ahead and wash all my veggies you need to wash them really really good i'm going to use about and somebody said they never heard of putting uh, celery in cilantro. I put it in mine all the time. I like that little crunch and I like that flavor that celery gives. So this, um, this is about uh, a good five, about six sticks of uh, celery. And I'm going to use uh, these bell green green peppers are a good size. So I'm going to use a nice green pepper and I'll probably use half of this package of tomatoes and I've got one big onion there that I'll be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these veggies washed so we can get this sauce going. Okay, so hang tight while I go wash everything and I'll be right, right back. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get started doing the um, chopping the veggies for the salsa. Um, Let's see, I've got uh, celery already in there. I think I'll throw a couple of pieces of onions in there. Remember about six or eight stalks of celery. And again, the celery to me just gives it that really a good crunchy flavor. And I just love, love that crunch that it gives. So I'm, I think this, this is gonna be as much as I'm gonna make. This is probably a quart and a half. And Lauren and I are the two that love homemade salsa. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with it. Um, When you when you saw when you chop it and then some of it I'll chop it I'll just pulse it and chop it coarsely but this is a good consistency right here just about like that and just get it all going like that and we're gonna have us some good old salsa y'all so it's gonna take me a good uh about 10 12 minutes to get everything all chopped up so while we're doing that, if you want to make some salsa, go grab you some bell pepper, celery, onion, and tomatoes. And you can make you some good old homemade salsa as well. It's real simple to make, y'all. So hang on and I'll be right back. I'm not going to make y'all sit here and just listen to this thing grind for the next 15 minutes. But that's about how much time it's going to take to get everything all cut up. About a good 15 minutes to get it chopped up here in my little old chopper. Okay, so hang tight and I'll be right back. We'll go ahead and start with the, I'm gonna get some green peppers going just to show y'all. Just break those green peppers up. They don't have to be put in in any kind of, you know, if you wanna cut them, slice them, just take your hands and just break them and get them in there. And what I try to do is, I'm doing this round, I'm trying to put some of each one of the ingredients in there so that I can go ahead and get them all chopped up. And that will help to get everything mixed as well. Okay. 
this this is just so easy it's so simple y'all and i'm just doing this to show you how you know you start get your color going in there i think that's enough i'm okay so i'm using what i said six stalks of celery a large one and one half large green peppers and we're gonna say three to four large tomatoes and then i'm gonna put some fresh garlic in there so I'm going to just go ahead and let you just see this. How, when I say I want to, to pulse it like that, if you pulse it like that, it doesn't get chopped up. It's fine. So you can have some of it in bigger chunks and some of it just real fine brown. And I'll let y'all see the difference between the two. Okay. Still got salt in there. I'm gonna get that. It's just a one piece in there. And look, if you get a, a big piece going in there and you don't want to keep chopping on it, just take it out and just use it like it is. But if, as you can see, I'll let you see this. This is chopped up a little bit coarser than the last one. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead now and start putting the rest of the ingredients in. I got my bell pepper, celery, and onions all nicely chopped. Perfectly chopped. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? And so, so healthy. And y'all know it's gonna taste good. Anything look that good, got to taste good. So, I'm going to add in, I put some cilantro, I'm put another tablespoon of cilantro. Because I don't have any fresh cilantro. And I said, like I said, I, I got to remember tomorrow to get some from the store. Cilantro just gives it that other flavor that it needs. So what I am going to do, I'm going to go ahead up here. Get me, uh, even though I put in about a fourth of a cup of fresh garlic. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with another. Because this, to me, this is just good with lots of garlic powder. Put me another tablespoon of garlic powder in there. There we go. Okay. Um, I got some some um, crushed red pepper is lurking around here. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna use some of this a um, little bit of my chili lime. About a tablespoon of that chili lime. There's a little bit of heat in that. Give it a little bit different flavor. And that's a tablespoon of that. And then I'm gonna do some of my cilantro lime, a tablespoon of that. Cause I don't have any fresh limes to put in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and, it needs a little bit of heat in there. So I'm gonna put enough heat in there. We don't like a lot of heat cause I eat most of this and I don't want a lot of heat in there. That means hot. You can put some crushed red peppers in there. About a half a teaspoon is enough. Uh, if you wanna put crushed red pepper. Now I'm gonna pour about a fourth a cup of lemon juice and this works well if you don't have fresh lemon you can use fresh lemon fresh lime and then i'm gonna put me another fourth a cup of bragg's vinegar in there and we're just about there i think i've got everything in there we go we're going to give this a good stir make sure you stir it up really 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 good and believe it or not i don't have to put no brown sugar in here <laughs> I know some of y'all waiting on brown sugar, but no, this does not need any brown sugar. This needs that. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in. I'll put one teaspoon, probably two teaspoons of salt all together. Once it sits for about a week, it's at its peak, but you can eat it right now. Just like it is, you can eat this over chicken. You can eat it with fish. You can put it just over some rice. See, I'm a veggie person, so I will eat this real good over some rice. So. That's our fresh salsa. All done with that. And I'm going to get over here and get me some dinner going. It's time for that rotisserie chicken. I'm going to grab a rotisserie chicken and uh, put some kind of sauce on it and stir fry some cabbage. And that's going to be dinner, y'all. So, y'all, thank y'all for hanging out with me for a little while. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, y'all, here we are with my favorite chicken. It's a rotisserie chicken, y'all. And the uh, important thing to watch on this one because y'all know I'm trying to come up with that hundred ways to make chicken and a lot of times I just go and get the rotisserie chicken rather than doing the fresh chicken to wash and clean and all that some of these dishes that I make um 
it, the rotisserie chicken goes better and of course it's more convenient. And then there are other dishes that I make with chicken. I need to cook that chicken from scratch because I want a certain flavor to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna mix a sauce to pour over. Y'all know I'm a mixologist. So what I'm gonna start with, I've got about a fourth of a cup of the broth from that rotisserie chicken in there. I've got me a, uh, <clears throat> I've already taken some, uh, this is some um, green curry paste. This is good and it's hot, I'm telling you the truth. I can't, I've been had that four or five years, so you don't use a lot of it because it's hot. Okay, so that's about, about a half a teaspoon. Okay, then I'm going to put a teaspoon of my chicken bouillon seasoning in there. I'm going to put me a teaspoon of regular curry powder in there. Okay, that's a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to go in my, mm, well, okay. Then I'm going, go, I'm going into my um, garlic jar. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of fresh garlic in there, like so. Heavy on the garlic, because that's going to be the sauce that I'm going to put on this chicken. Okay. This is about a small onion I've diced up. I'm going to put this on, on, on the food processor and just get it immense as small as I possibly can. And then I'm going to um, probably pour a little, uh, some water in there. That's why I put the bouillon because I want it to be brothy. And I will, hopefully this will come out with sort of a thick, thickness to it because then I'm gonna pour it right over that chicken. I'm gonna run it through the oven for about 30 minutes on 400 degrees and let it cook into that chicken. And that's how we're gonna serve this chicken tonight. And I'm gonna steam some rice to eat with it. I was gonna do some stir fried cabbage, but I think I'm just gonna steam that rice to eat with it and uh, I think that'll be enough, you know? Oh, I've got, I've got a, uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna get one of my confetti peppers to put in one of my little multicolor, two of those little multicolor peppers to put in my sauce mix there. So y'all hold on, I'll be right, right back. Okay, so y'all can see what's in that cup. Okay, y'all, I am back. We're going to go ahead and get this sauce going. Okay, so I've got my uh, onion powder, garlic powder, chopped onion, uh, small chopped onion, a tablespoon, teaspoon of onion powder, teaspoon of garlic powder, a uh, couple of um, tablespoons of fresh garlic that I've got to chop up. So we're going to chop all of this up into the food processor. And I've also got some of that chicken bouillon seasoning in there. I'm going to have to pour some water in it. I'm gonna cook it down a little bit, then I'm gonna pour it right over the chicken. Chicken's going into the oven for about 30 minutes because I want that sauce to cook into it. This is gonna be my garlic butter chicken. And um, that is what we're having for dinner today. Okay, let's go ahead and get, I've got it in the food process. I'm gonna have, my cord is not long enough to leave it right here. Let's push this chicken back and get this going on. Okay. Okay. Oh, there we are. Okay. So I had to pause for the car, y'all. No reaper wanted some pancakes. I'm cooking a little late, so I stopped and made them a few pancakes. So took all of five minutes, y'all. Okay, so let's get this. We're gonna go ahead and get this. And I'm gonna um, get this. Let's see if we can have it on right. Okay. I need this. I'm gonna mix this up. This is kind of like it is. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna kill real. Period, period. That means real, 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 real fine. Okay, now that I've got it to that point, I am also gonna throw some um, uh, mushrooms in there. You know I bought all these mushrooms, so I gotta cook the mushrooms. 
Okay, so I'm also going to put some of these, uh, like I said that before I left over, I'm going to cut up a one yellow and one um, red, one of these little confetti peppers. You know, just as much flavor as I can get in there. Let me drop in about uh, half a cup of mushrooms. Okay. Get them going. I may have to put a little bit of water in there. I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Oh, by the way, I also put a fourth of a cup of butter in this sauce too, because it's going to be a, a garlic and butter and mushroom sauce. I'm going to give, I'm going to puree it up just as fine as I can get it. That's about as fine as I'm gonna get it. That's gonna be so, so good, y'all. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put about maybe a fourth of a cup of water. I'm gonna put some, um, that chicken bouillon seasoning in about a teaspoon of, of, of uh, chicken bouillon seasoning, because you need broth. I'm making broth, in other words. This is gonna be my broth. And we're going to boil it for about two or three minutes and then I'm going to pour it right over this chicken and put it into a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got it all in. It's nice and thick. And we're just going to let it cook there for about 10 minutes and then I'll pour it right over that chicken. I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, the mushrooms are in. So, like I said, I'm going to let it cook there for about a good 10 minutes. And then I'll pour it right over that chicken and run it through the oven. And we'll have this meal done, y'all. Yeah, done deal, darling. Okay, we're getting ready to put this garlic and mushroom sauce over this chicken. I'm jealous of you. I slice that chicken so that the uh, sauce can be all in between and it's going to go in the oven. Just let it bake on. Have plenty, plenty, plenty of sauce. Plenty of sauce, y'all. Um, it looks like a gravy. I thickened it just a little bit with a little bit of, I had some um, some of that pre-mixed gravy mix. I think it was pork or chicken. If you got any kind at all, or if you don't have any of those little pre-mixed gravy packets, just go ahead and make your little flour water put over it. And we're going to leave it uncovered. It was already starting to crisp on top, but I'm going to leave it uncovered so it can... Uh, Kind of keep a little bit of that Christmas. And you know, this gravy, whatever I have left over, this over a biscuit. Child, please. I don't even want to get started with that because I'm not supposed to eat a whole lot of biscuits. But before it's over, I'm going to have a biscuit with this. Okay, so we're just going to slide this in the oven 30 minutes. I've got it on 400 degrees. So it'll go ahead on and heat up real quick and cook, and we'll be right back. Okay, y'all, dinner is ready. That is that beautiful golden, golden brown mushroom garlic butter chicken. It's rotisserie chicken with that mushroom garlic butter sauce over it. A nice garden salad with avocado, uh, cucumbers, and tomatoes. And of course, some good old steamed jasmine rice, and that's just a little bit extra sauce or gravy on the back there if anybody wants extra. So thank y'all for stopping by. Thank you for your comments, your comments, and your well wishes. And most of all, thank y'all for praying without ceasing along with me. I can feel your prayers. And again, let's continue to keep Tina Turner's family and friends and fans, all of us, lifted up. 
as we um, go through the grief process for her passing on today. A great woman, lost a great uh, artist. She was an actress, entertainer, just a great woman, somebody that I imagine to be a friend in my head. I think she would have been a person that I could have been a good friend with. So anyway, thank y'all. Until I decide to cook again, pray without ceasing, do something kind for somebody, a word, a deed, a card, cash out, whatever, just anything to lift somebody's day. And, uh, guys, remember, watch over those kids and keep up with them over the summer now, whatever they're going to be doing, away from home or wherever. And then through this end of the school year, they pass all their exams and pass on to the next grade. The graduations, congratulations to the, uh, was it first grade to, uh, no, kindergarten to first grade, first grade to second grade, whatever, to junior high school, high school, out of high school. Lauren is graduating this time. So congratulations to my darling Lauren. That's Tanya's granddaughter, my great-granddaughter, and Dexter's daughter. So she'll be uh, matriculating um, through the 12th grade, I think sometimes in June. But anyway, congratulations to Lauren. If you're looking at Gigi's post today, congratulations. Love you. Um, so proud of you. And, of course, Tania's going on to be a senior next year. Man Man is going on to be a junior. So congratulations to all these babies that are moving on. Callie is moving on to first grade. Narik moving on to uh, second grade. All these kids with these uh, A, A plus averages. So God bless them and keep them and watch over them. And we're going to help to watch over them as well. So, And that music out here in the background, some movie that's on. It's not mine. I don't claim any of it. So until I decide to cook again, love you guys. Toodles.